Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to video 59 of the 3D Game Engine tutorial series. In this video, we are going to finally be finishing up the Shader Resource Management System. We're going to be getting rid of all our extraneous Shader Children classes, and we're going to make all the resource management be done inside the Shader class. So let's go ahead, jump in, and get started. And it's at this point that we can finally implement a resource management system kind of like we have with Texture or with Mesh, where we have some resource management class that can find and delete different shader programs when they stop being used. So I'm going to create a shader, or a resource management class. I'm going to call shader resource. And it's going to be a lot like mesh resource, a lot like texture resource. In fact, it's probably going to be more like texture resource, so I'm going to copy that. And there. So we've got all the data. Just need to rename this to shader resource. Rename this to, oh, sure, program, just like I have in shader. Stop programs, program, all that good stuff. And, you know what, yeah. In the constructor, I'm going to say program equals gl create program. In fact, why am I not doing that with texture? I might want to change that in a moment, but, yeah. And there, so now I'm going to have a private shader resource called resource, and not program. And, oh, probably want to put the check in here as well, just so, you know, don't have any ridiculous failure things. Yeah, and in here I'll just say resource equals new shader resource and all that stuff. And there, so all I should have to do now is oh, change this to get program and just put here, wherever I'm using, I used to be using program, with resource dot get program. There. And all our resources are managed just like that. Well, not not exactly just like that. We still need to rep implement the hash map of used resources and whatnot, but pretty close to just like that. And hey, looks like well, looks like we got something working. So let's build and run. Let's make sure that it's still working. Good. We didn't break it like that. And now, really, I want to make sure that I actually can't or actually need to pass in an ID here, because that just seems, you know, that just seems a little odd that I'd need to do that. Yeah, I don't think I need to do that, do I? So let's fix that in, te in text resource, because I'm not entirely sure why I did that. I'm not going to take in an ID. It's going to create the texture, well, just like this, inside the resource there entirely constructed and deleted inside this class, just like, well, just like it probably should be. And here I can just say, well, you know, rather than... Actually, wait a minute, why do I need text resource like that? Yeah... Okay, this is not going to return an int, it's going to return a text resource. And... Or even better yet, I can just make this... No, that's good. So I can say... Texture resource resource. It's going to be a new texture resource, and I can say... Bind texture with resource.getID and all that stuff. And in the end, return resource.getID. Or, resource. Not, that, not as ID. There. Otherwise, returning null. Great. So... I can change this, just load texture, and that should work just fine. Nothing to it. Just to make sure, gonna run, gonna make sure I don't get a random seg fault when I'm closing the program or something. Can you even get seg faults in Java? Never thought about that. Not sure if it would just throw up some sort of Java exception instead. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, anyways, so yeah, we fixed texture now. Now back to shader. 
This is what it's really about. It's really about getting shader working. Well, because now, but I close texture, because I'm going to copy more stuff from here. I'm going to want a hash map for the loaded shaders. See, doing sort of the same thing. This way there's only one shader of a particular program at a time. So yeah, there's going to be loaded hash map, loaded shaders. Going to equal new hash map of, oh, except it's going to be to shader resource, not texture resource. And it's going to be done just, I don't know if you say just, but a lot like I'm doing with texture and all the other stuff, you know. Again, at this point, there's really not that much more to it, other than, whoops, need want to keep track of private string file name so that I can actually delete it. Here, this dot file name's always going to become file name, no matter what. Other than that, I'm just going to copy and paste what I have in texture. Again, not that much more to it. So, yeah. If resource is not equal to null, then... Alright. I'm probably going to want to <laughs> move all my hash map uniforms and whatnot into the resource. So just to save a bit of time, I moved this stuff in here off-screen, created getters for them right here, and I went ahead, went through, replaced everywhere that I used uniform names or types or whatnot with resource.get that. And yeah. And also I want to probably rename this to loaded shaders, because that's going to bother me if I don't, so yeah. So there. Now I'm performing the check. I'm getting the old resource. If it's not null, then I'm going to set the resource to the old resource, not going to, don't need anything else, and I'm going to add a reference. Otherwise, I want to create a new resource, and I create a new resource like this. So, yeah. Now this should still work with our singleton system. Shouldn't do anything to it, but it should still work with it. So let's go ahead and run. Let's make sure we haven't destroyed anything. Okay, good. Haven't destroyed anything. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So now let's take the plunge. Let's go into forward ambient. Just start a forward ambient just to, you know, not destroy everything at once. That's probably a bad idea. But yeah, just go ahead, delete forward ambient. Not going to safe delete it. And let's build and let's see where all the errors are. <laughs> yeah, that's my strategy. Okay, cool. So here, I'm going to actually keep that as a private variable now. So that way it do isn't deleted. So yeah, I can have a shader for forward ambient. And... Well, in my constructor, don't want anything being in an invalid state if I can help it, so I'm going to say that I could probably delete all this now. Don't need it. Yeah, right here. I'm going to say forward ambient equals new shader with the name forward ambient. And it should be able to pick up when, you know, things aren't working right. And, oh, and I don't need the ambient light variable anymore. I can go ahead and get rid of that comet as well. <laughs> Just going through and getting rid of things I don't think I need anymore. Actually, I'll group, I'll group these things together. I'll move this up. Just because I, I'm i picky like this is how I like to organize things. I like shaders being above cameras for some reason, so there. Much better. That makes me a lot happier. <laughs> so yeah, that should have factored out forward ambient. I should be able to run it and still work, but now there's no forward ambient class. Yeah, it's all being done manually, or not manually, but with our new shader resource management system, with no singletons or anything needed. And the best part of this is, now if we want to write a new shader, we don't need to create a new class. If we just, as long as we follow our naming conventions of making sure we prefix things correctly, all of the things will be set and updated exactly as they should. So yeah, now I'm going to take the big step and just completely delete all these things, build, and let's see where the errors are. I think there should only be three, actually. Yeah. Don't need this anymore. And instead, I'm going to set the shader to a new shader of... Yeah, going to import shader, but it's going to be forward-directional. And yeah, don't need that. 
I think I'm going to need sort of just a similar pattern all over the place. See it? Can't find forward point, that's fine. I can you can delete that. And this will be new shader, forward point. And this will be most... Actually, after a spotlight, I think this will be everything. So, yeah. Final thing, place this, and we get forward spot. And this, if I did everything correctly, you know, if I did everything correctly, you can actually probably get rid of this now, for some reason. Not sure why, but seem to be able to. Oh, right, never mind, it makes sense now. But yeah, now we should, everything should work right, and every, all of the shader code, all of it, should be properly managed by the shader class itself. And look at that. So, basically, our actual, you know, sort of shader management, setting up shaders, creating new shaders, has gotten almost infinitely simpler. Just need to create the file, say new of the file name, and that's it. All the setting up is done for us. And that, folks, is the power of our resource management system. So with that, folks, I believe we may have just finished the resource management se segment. I was going to do rendered to texture in here just because, you know, thought that might be a nice place to do it, but nah, I'm going to save that for when we actually need rendered to texture. So, yeah. I, it's been quite a journey, but we finally are out of the woods. We're finally out of the move things around, make things a little bit better stuff. And we're going to be getting into the, the more interesting things now, the more types of things that a lot of people have been asking me about, like, you know, how do physics work? How can you add audio to the engine? How can you add light, or not lighting, but how can you add shadows? How can you add normal mapping? How can you add all these different detail effects? Because now we have the sort of infrastructure to make all of that possible. And not just possible, but easily possible, and so that they aren't all mutually exclusive of one another. Because that's, that's one of the big tricks with rasterization. You can get some really nasty code bases just because a lot of the tricks that you do with it are, well, can be easily mutually exclusive of one another and just make a giant balloon up your whole code base. So, yeah, we got a nice system that makes it a lot easier to do that sort of thing now. You have no idea how important it is to, to get that right early on. It can be quite a nightmare if you don't do it. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll be starting the next segment. So thank you, and I'll see you then.